Okay. Um, so what I would like to share is a few um, learnings that we have from, from projects that we've been doing at the Hive. Uh, over the past years, really, with Transmart. Um, there's four of them. And then, of course, there's the ongoing 17.1 project, which I'll say a few words about in the end. Um, uh, I probably, I guess, um, bringing a message that I have uh, consistently voiced in, in earlier meetings as well, so not many surprises from my presentations today, but hopefully bit more insight in, in what we're actually doing. Uh, the first one is trade. Since you heard all about trade from Mariska, I think I can probably skip most of these slides. Just um, this is the uh, overview that, um, that we use and that you saw Mariska uh, consistently going to. So the different levels of data we have in trade are clinical data, imaging data, biobanking and experimental. Uh, and that's where we use Transmart uh, to integrate this. And a lot of the work in trade has, has been on Transmart itself, as also Mariska showed, for example, the copy and variation workflows, etc. cetera. Um, but also don't underestimate the work that goes into all these connectors, like from OpenClinica to Transmart, uh, Xnot Transmart, etc. Galaxy Transmart. Um, so this is the, the web page. Um, you can go there and you can request accounts. I think for the moment it's, it's if you are involved in trade itself. Uh, but um, it does show that we have uh, a nice toolkit here of open source tools uh, that work together. Uh, one of those is CBioPortal. Mirishka already mentioned it and I'd like to expand on that a little bit. So um, uh, this is one of the other tools beside Transmart that we um, really use a lot in, in the Hive and that we have a lot of projects ongoing with customers. For example, you see here Memorial Sloan Kettering, Dana-Farber. Um, and I think it's, it's mostly complementary to Transmart. I don't see uh, those as um, you know, competing products or platforms. See, BioPortal is a visualization portal specifically uh, focused and created for cancer genomics. So a lot of those views here are specific for comparing uh, germline uh, versus um, the, the, the disease tissue. Um, a lot of it is focused on cancer pathways. Um, so I think if your raw data is in Transmart, uh, or, well, raw, let's say uh, level, level 3 data, level 2 data, and then... Um, the level three data goes into CBIO portal. So in CBIO portal, you're more, more looking at the calls, while in Transmart you have the, the full mutation data, for example. A nice uh, visualization from CBIO portal that leverages this, uh, the calls is here. So you can see the amplifications, deletions, mutations um, on a gene level, all in one nice graph. But again, this of course uh, presupposes that you have a step in between transmitter and bioportal where you make these calls and where you do these annotations so that you go from a VCF which is in Transmart to MEF which is in CBioPortal and it goes something like this so you have Transmart as a data warehouse um, and, and CBioPortal as a well a visualization portal or data mart whatever you want to call it um, this is a slide to show that there is a broader set of open source software that we uh, we use at the Hive. So one of the goals we have in a company and that I have personally is to build a full open source tool set for translational medicine, uh, everything from start to finish. And hopefully at some point in the very uh, far future, even for the whole of drug development, including clinical studies. But for now, I think research and epidemi epidemiology, so phase four studies are the most uh, easy parts to access for open source software. And, and that's where we use them. So second example is EMIF. EMIF is an IMI project, uh, the Innovative Medicine Initiative. Uh, this slide you saw early today from Keith. Um, so I'm not gonna spend time on that, but uh, what is behind here, of course, is that clinical trials is, is a very useful tool to assess a very specific hypothesis, but often it's also useful to do observational studies uh, where you can uh, use real data 
And there's a lot of differences, uh, of course, between those paradigms. So first of all, real data is, um, well, it, there's no uh, intervention. Um, it's typically also a lot larger in the sample size. So if you have millions of people, and even if we have 50 million, um, in the Odyssey community, there is uh, 650 million uh, patients already mapped to the OMP data model. Come back to that in a second. Um, the endpoints are different. Uh, the statistics is quite different. So where in Transmart we might do a t-test, I think in uh, a full epidemiological analysis, uh, you need to do modeling, propensity score adjustment, and all these kind of things. So there's all statistics toolbox attached to that. And of course, the costs and the perspective are also quite different. Um, and observational studies is much uh, less costly to carry out than uh, a complete clinical trial intervention study. Um, so that's another reason to focus more on it. In EMIF, the idea is that we set up an information framework to explore this kind of data. What we have is a very div diverse set of uh, registries, uh, linkage systems, um, so we have everything from primary care to uh, specific biobanks. And in total, like I said, more than 50 million uh, European uh, citizens are represented in those uh, collections. In EMIF, we really have two tracks. Um, and one track we use Transmart, and the other track we use Odyssey and OMOP. So I'll tell you, of course, more about uh, Transmart, because that's what we're here for. Um, Transmart is used in EMIF to collect all the data from the cohorts that we have, for example, on Alzheimer's disease. Um, but it's not used in isolation. So Transmart is the um, barrel the data goes, but we also have, for example, own cloud, which is more for the, the raw data files which are coming in. Uh, we use a web protege there, or an alternative is Arborist, which I think is presented just now in the other session, unfortunately. But... Um, so there's a number of tools around Transmart that help with the data creation. Uh, in Alzheimer's disease, for example, we have uh, cohorts uh, from, from all over Europe uh, participating. And these are very deeply uh, phenotyped um, and genotyped subjects. So that's a very nice uh, starting to look like a serious alternative for, for ADNI, for example, if you're in Alzheimer's. Uh, with all these data pulled together in, in Transmart. Uh, a lot of the work that went into this is um, because all these are from different um, hospitals, like St. Pau is in, in Barcelona, uh, Ad Neuromet is from King's College, this is obviously Antwerp, this Kripa is from um, uh, collaboration between um, Maastricht and, um, and Amsterdam. So. All of these are from different European location, and uh, most of the work indeed went into mapping and harmonizing the data. Um, there's a lot of different cognition uh, rating scales, for example, that are being used. On the other side of EMIF, uh, where we use Odyssey and OMOP, we have all these registries. Uh, you can see here the different um, registries <coughs> that we have, like the thin uh, UK uh, database. I'm not going to expand on, on OMAP further here, but it's, it's certainly, if you're interested in real-world data, something to look up. Um, and I'll end the uh, email with a nice quote from the coordinator, Johan van der Leij. Okay, um, another example, and I'll, I'll come to the pattern in these examples uh, at the end, but you probably can detect it already, is a radar CNS. This is a completely different approach. Um, the idea here is that in chronic diseases, if you look at the actual uh, care situation, um, the problem that we have, for example, uh, the patient finish visiting a clinic, if it's an Alzheimer's patient or a, a Parkinson's patient, say, that is a very uh, bespoke event in time uh, where um, the Alzheimer's expert or the Parkinson's expert only sees you know, a snapshot of the patient. You don't see the real situation. Obviously, this morning we had a great talk about how important longitudinal data is. And the way we go about it in radar is to see if we can use wearable devices 
to, um, to get more longitudinal data around the patient's behavior. There's three main uh, areas in radar that we focus on, clinical areas, and we also have some of the, the foremost uh, scientific experts from these communities in the consortium, which I think is really cool. So um, these clinicians, I mean, obviously that they, they often are not uh, a lot into IT and data science, but um, as we also saw in the case of trade, bringing these communities together uh, can generate a lot of value. Um, in epilepsy, it's about the monitoring of the seizures. So what we're trying to assess is um, whether you can uh, detect a seizure reliably using uh, a variable devices. So uh, we're testing a whole bunch of, of different uh, watches, uh, trackers, to see if that's possible. The golden standard in epilepsy to, to really monitor and detect uh, a seizure is a EEG. So uh, that's, of course, very invasive where you have to uh, wear all the electrodes. Um, but patient reporting doesn't work in epilepsy. It just is not reliable at all. You, um, the, the patient can tell themselves uh, correctly if, if they're having a seizure or not. Um, so, well, maybe they, they can tell, but if you ask them later to write it down, it, the quality of the data is not good enough to do data science on it. That's why it's so important to figure out if there's other means besides this very invasive EEG um, to, to do this on the go using wearable device. Um, MS is a, is a very different clinical area. So in MS, it's, it's much more um, uh, the, the disease symptoms and progression are, are vary a lot uh, case to case. Uh, but there we're looking into areas like uh, sleep and um, activity, obviously, cognition, to see if we can assess those either using a smartphone uh, so, for example, by, by um, uh, using email data or by using um, mobile uh, phone usage data. And the same uh, goes for depression, which is obviously even a, um, uh, less uh, clinically characterized disease. I mean, there's so many different types of depression that it's almost impossible to, uh, to, to really um, put that in one bucket. But what we're trying to do there is see if we can, for example, predict uh, bipolar state transitions. Um, th the kinds of devices we have are, uh, so physiology, of course, and, and here you can see a few of the results, ECG, e HR, uh, respiration, skin temperature. Um, I talked about a mobile phone, so from the mobile phone you can infer data, such as uh, speech, um, we have uh, collaborators from uh, it's University of Passau in Germany. Uh, they do um, uh, rec pattern recognition in speech. So uh, a patient, for example, um, reads a sentence uh, on the phone, and you can then use that to uh, detect biomarkers in the speech itself. Um, yeah, and and. and Radar, you have to realize, is really a research project. So the, the pharma companies leading this, like UCB, Janssen, etc., um, and also the academics, they're all new to this area, and no one knows yet what, what's going to work. Um, but in the technology stack, we have room for Transmart. We're not busy with Transmart yet on this, uh, because right now we're struggling with um, setting up the open source software infrastructure for even you know, gathering all this data. For that, we're using Apache uh, Kafka. And uh, I'll come to some of the challenges here. Um, so we're developing a platform, uh, a core radar CNS platform, which is completely open source, that you can use to gather data from variable devices and ultimately process them together with other data, like clinical data in Transmart. Um, now, the different types of data that you have is, first of all, um, if people are already using something like Fitbit, uh, the company Fitbit has cloud APIs that we can uh, hook into. So this is, uh, for example, Open M Health is, is an open source application for that. And the other one is even probably more interesting, is a direct data stream. 
we're using specific studies to test this platform. And here you see an example. This is from the University of Freiburg, where we have um, an epilepsy study ongoing. So um, you have to imagine that in this hospital we have a number of epilepsy patients which are already continuously being monitored by uh, EEG and, and also by camera. So they're, they're on the watch. Uh, those are um, uh, severe cases, of course. And um, because we have the EEG and we have the annotations already from the, the nurses that are, are overseeing the, um, those patients, it's a very easy um, plug-in, if you will, to add to that a number of variable sensors. So that's the study setting that we have uh, there in Freiburg. And uh, again, the, the uh, use cases here are, are two, two main ones for now. One is real-time, which... Obviously, we're not going to use Transmart because it's, it's not set up to do that kind of thing, but we're using Kafka directly uh, to monitor, is the device actually uh, recording? Uh, does it um, produce the right data? I mean, if, if the watch, for example, is, is not put on correctly, it could result in um, a garbage data. So that's the, the real-time use case we have. And the other one is, uh, of course, uh, data science and an analysis, and there we, we, we can use Transmart. Right now, we're just struggling with uh, all the variable devices that we want to use and how to set up Kafka. And um, we're trying to use a, a Raspberry Pi, which is a, a small computer, um, and install Android on it to see if we can use that as a, um, a probe, if you will, to directly get the data from the variables. So it's all you know, very low-level stuff right now. But um, this is a five-year project, and I imagine uh, in a few years, I'll have uh, more to tell about what we do at Transmart here. Last case is translocation from um, um, also IMI. In, uh, translocation is part of a, a larger program called New Drugs for Bad Bugs. Uh, there's a, a number of different topics focusing on, um, for example, tr translocation where we are is, is gram-negative bacteria uh, and a number of other uh, bacteria as well, as you can see here. So um, one of the challenges we have here, because this is, this is more driven from a um, pharmaceutical drug development angle, is to combine clinical and preclinical data. So in this case, we use, again, another software program called LSP, uh, which is from Grid System, a Danish company, uh, to, um, to, to store all the preclinical and discovery data. So this is very much um, uh, drug chemical focused. And we use Transmart for the clinical and the omics data. And uh, R is used in this case, or Spotfire. We have two, uh, two end tools here to integrate the two. So to show you the example of R, um, we've created an R package which uh, combines the Transmart R client with the LSP R client so that I can, for example, use LSP to uh, look at compounds and um, get specific uh, comp compound concepts, which are then, again, also represented in Transmart. So now I can get the, uh, the data from Transmart on the omics, and I get the compound data from LSP and make an integrated visualization of that. Another thing that um, you'll be hearing about more uh, in other presentations is um, uh, we've been working in, uh, as part of Translocation also on a new user interface for Transmart, uh, specifically the user interface for uh, a data exploration. So looking at the, the concepts. Um, I think the feedback we've received so far from Translocation users, and we're also showing this to to other groups like trade is quite good and potentially this tool could grow into uh, maybe a new interface for Transmart. Obviously at the moment it doesn't cover um, uh, all the functionality that the, the current Transmart version has yet. Uh, but what's nice about this is that it's um, completely built on new uh, technology, um, web technology. So the code is a lot more actual, which means that it it works in more web browsers, it works uh, faster, and it's a lot more interactive as well as, as the current Transmart interface. To, um, if you have any uh, strong uh, ideas or 
um, views on this, we'd love to have more discussions on uh, where should Transmart go in terms of user interfaces and would something like this be useful for you? So please also uh, uh, attend uh, the talks and, and talk to uh, my colleagues who are here, like uh, Vibo and Piotr, who are there in the room. Um, so uh, now I've shown you four different projects at the Hive where we use Transmart. And uh, I like this cartoon that I also used last year in the annual meeting, um, how, how Transmart can function. I think uh, no one has a problem with this, this representation. And I've shown you now some examples also on, on the sensors uh, data. Um, but if you look at all these use cases, the point I want to make is um, Transmart is not just a standalone product. It's really something that's always, at least in this example, and I think in many cases, part of a larger infrastructure. If you're attending the poster session this afternoon, I really encourage you to look at the poster from AbbVie. Uh, uh, which Ben is presenting. So I think there's also a very nice example of, you know, AppFeed just taking advantage of uh, Transmart as a platform, looking at the specific uh, in-house customers they have, and then uh, writing something new on top of the, the, the infrastructure in terms of the APIs that Transmart has to provide. And uh, this I showed also last year. Um, so in my opinion, um, the way the, the software, uh, the code in Transmart would be best structured is by building out this core layer um, of the database and the APIs. Um, and that doesn't have to change every day. I think maybe one, uh, one release per year of um, uh, the core layer is, is more than enough. But those are where we, we have the, the fundamental uh, data model new features, like the longitudinal data support, which again, obvious from the keynote, um, that we really need that in Transmart. But on top of that, you can have multiple apps, and all these apps are already existing today, uh, and there are more coming, um, like the new client. So I think uh, some of these apps could have their own evolution pattern, and um, Transmart could, any Transmart installation could be a combination of the, the core, of course, with um, a select amount of plugins, if you will. Um, so, again, this slide is, is from last year, uh, this is basically what I just said. If we have a core and we have um, more evolution in the apps on top of Transmart, then that would really help the community and it would also help uh, others to interact with it. And I think that um, with the current ongoing 17.1 project with the Pro Alliance that was presented to you this morning by Keith, uh, we really are taking... Uh, the right steps in that direction, basically happening now and uh, when uh, early next year we have this version finished, I think we're very nicely set up to uh, have um, uh, other people, say people from European construction that haven't worked with Transmart yet, to simply start building their own apps on top of Transmart, much like AppFee did and like all the examples that I, I showed you so far. Um, just on 17.1, I know there is a full talk on this on Thursday, but, but as a primer, um, the content of the project is to support uh, a better modeling of, of longitudinal time series data in Transmart, data, for example, coming from EHR, um, and more in line with I2B2 data model, to improve also um, uh, vocabulary annotations, and to add uh, Arvados integration. And all this while maintaining backwards compatibility, because of course we don't want to lose the continuity between uh, Transmart versions. And if you take that forward and you think about maybe a year from now, how a Transmart deployment could look like, it could be something like this. Um, you have uh, the Transmart uh, core, so the, the result of, of the 70.1 backend project, combined with, uh, for example, uh, the base UI that I showed from Translocation, uh, with Arvados as a data processing layer, um, maybe Arvados Keep. I'm just showing an example here. It doesn't have to be this way, but you could use uh, Arvados Keep or, or S3 as a storage layer, and, and you need the compute layer as well. Uh, now, if you set it up like this, then you would have your, your core data in the, the core DB, 
um, you'd be able to browse it in the new UI. You'd be able to do analysis on it using things like uh, SmartR, which, by the way, is already also integrated with the UI, um, and uh, the R API. So that's the, the let's say, uh, more the user-facing user um, infrastructure of Transmart. And then on the infrastructure side, you could have uh, workflows that do things like GWAS um, imputation or you know, uh, running Plink or... Um, processing proteomics data into the format that it needs to be have for Transmart. So I think if uh, if we take advantage of, of uh, what we're going to do in 17.1, uh, there's a bright future where uh, Transmart can hopefully be used by a lot more um, projects and um, companies even than it is today. That's it, thank you.